Welcome back. In this video, what we're going to be looking at is once we have our terrain finally built off the process that we want to use. So I've actually just gone and continued on with the process that I prefer. Remember, you did have a number of different ways that you can actually use, but I preferred this method using the, the raw file. So I've continued with that. And actually what I've done is I've used the raw file initially, but then I've actually dragged and dropped the terrain toolkit on and played with the texture option. So I've pretty much auto textured this one um, to allow me to actually do quite a lot. So what I'm actually gonna do is, before we get too in depth, let's actually start the asset to be imported. So whilst you're watching the video, uh, that can be going in the background because it does take a little while. So the very first thing that you need to do is you need to grab the asset out of off the network drive or off me. And to do that, is you can go to assets, import package and custom package. This is obviously when you have that asset off me. I've just placed it into the desktop for today and it's called Horrorish Caves. Now remember it is a 594 megabyte file so it will take some time to export. So do this now and then once you've started it up, then actually come back to the video whilst it's going through. So the very first thing is it will go through and decompress the package. Now that will take some time um, and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pause the video here and come back to it once this job has been done. All right, once that's actually complete, you'll be left with a importing package. And this is where the time is really going to take is to actually go through and import these. So leave everything selected and click import. Now this package actually comes from manufacturer KO. Unfortunately, I can only give it to my students. So if you are one of the public, you can easily jump onto the asset store and do a quick search for rocks um, or caves for that matter. And you will find a number of assets that are available. Um, but unfortunately, my license doesn't cover me for that. The one that I'm actually using is the Underworld Cave Environment by manufacturer KO. Um, so that is what I'm actually using there. It is definitely worth a, a look into because it is a brilliant asset. Uh, that being said, there are cheaper alternatives that you can use and it's just a matter of what you want to do and what your budget aligns for. So what you'll see here is it does take a long time for this to process. So this is where you would like to go through, leave Unity running in the background whilst you watch the rest of this video. Okay, so what you'll actually notice is once that's actually been imported, you'll actually have a new Underworld folder. And inside that Underworld folder, you'll have two different subfolders. One's called Origin, that has all the, the source files, so your models and your textures. The other one is your prefabs loaded. So what we've done is we've created a whole heap of prefabs. This is actually from the uh, developer of this asset pack. And what he's actually done is he's actually implemented occlusion culling. Now, occlusion culling isn't something that we go into too much, but just quickly as a very brief introduction, it, occlusion culling is the amount of detail is actually shown to the player. So there is the point of a lot zero is your closest with the most detail. And then you'll actually follow through with a number of things of as you zoom out, you'll actually see it goes from lot zero and on my sliding lot group over here, it then goes to lot one. And you can actually see that that simplifies the image by those blue lines that are changing. If you can't see that, it's not too bad. It's just the amount of polygons are uh, reducing. The last part that you'll actually see is it goes into a culled state and culled basically means it's not there. It doesn't render to the camera. So if I zoom in on that, you'll actually see that it actually reappears and disappears. And there you go. And it gets that more detail. It means it helps the uh, game run a lot better, especially when you're playing with larger maps. So from here, what you've actually got to do is you have a number of different things from mushrooms to bricks to all these other bits and pieces to actually place onto your scene. So one of the main things that I want to do is I'm actually just going to remove that for the moment. The idea is, is to build a cave system. So the very first part I'm going to do is I'm going to pick just quickly Let's pick, yeah, let's actually go over here. I'm going to pick a very basic area just here. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just start dragging out some uh, of these bigger rocks. So let's, uh, go through and drag out some of these rocks. 
Now they don't look too big at the moment, but that's all right. Now it will take a bit of getting used to, and I've just lost that one. So I'm just going to remove it. And just by adding some of these rocks down and into the area that I'm going to have, I'm going to actually set up like a bit of a cave entrance. Now the problem is, is these are actually very big um, cliffs that I've actually got here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go and grab my player. And I'm just going to go to game object and move to view. And what this is going to do is it brings it a little bit closer so I can bring it close to my cave entrance. And the reason why I'm bringing my player here is just a bit of a sense of scale. So if you actually bring in your player and have a look at the size of him and compared to the size of the cliff, like these are huge cliffs. So probably not the best place to build it, but we'll do it anyway. So you can actually start to see that that's where it is. So once you actually start to play out and bring in all your rocks, you can play around with this a lot more than what I'm going to be. Um, I'm actually going to do a bit of a cheating method. It doesn't look that realistic when you've got rocks this size, depending on what effect you're going for. But I'm just trying to show you a very, very basic effect. So what we actually now have is we have this doorway. So there's a couple of tricks that I'm going to show you. The very first one is let's first make the ground flat and to do that let's reduce our brush size. So just by going through and selecting that height we can actually do that and to select the height you just hold down shift and it selects the sample target height as the tool instructs. And what you'll see is I'm just going to keep doing that. Then I'm going to smooth that down so there's a bit of a path. And whilst I'm here, just so I get the idea of it, I'm just going to paint a very basic path. I think that's sand, but that'll do. The very next thing I'm going to do is it looks a little bit weird that it's just like that. So if I wanted to, I could even go through and let's just grab this rock, increase the size of that one, and jump that down. So it actually starts to get a bit more of a rocky entrance. And if I hold down Control D, it actually allows me to duplicate that. And just by going through my keyboard shortcuts of W, E and R, you'll see that I'm changing between the three, move, rotate and scale. And I'll do this rock quite quickly and constantly pressing Control D to, to duplicate. It just gives that bit more realism. and doesn't look so fake as you've got something like that going on. So once that's actually done, I need you to guys to actually go through and build your cave entrance. The only other difference that you need is, is if you actually go through and build a bit of a back into your cave, so it looks a little bit more realistic. And even grabbing another one of these rock threes, I'm just going to zoom in a bit more on this one. And just by rotating it up on the wall, we'll enlarge it just for quickness sake. What we're going to be doing is you actually have this cave system that's actually going to get started. So it gives a bit of depth to the cave and you can do that again. It does go through. Now one of the things you will notice is it might be easier for you to actually be using global or local. It is up to you. I prefer global in some instances, local in the other. And you can change that between global and local there. And it's just the way that it's been angled or rotated. So once you actually have that down the way that you want it, we're actually going to go through and place in a couple of wooden doors. So just a couple of wooden panels that you can rotate, bring up, and if you place them in a way of just building like a bit of a, a door for the player, so again I'm not going to be doing too many of them, but you get the bit of idea. Use some variation because it makes it look more realistic, and you'll be able to actually have that locked off door. 
After this video, what we're going to be looking at is actually going through and building the actual cave system. Um, but make sure you do that one as best as possible. Until then.